What is this? This is the Honda Civic Si, the 2022 yeah. Honda Civic Si. This is the 11th gen Civic. Very exciting. It is exciting, actually, because this one is restyled. Let's put it that way. You want to start there, do you? No, not yeah. really. What I want to start with is the fact that, sure. in general, Honda listens. They do. Honda They're pays great. attention to what all their fans say, yep. and they try to solve things. Whether or not they solve yeah. the styling is questionable, but they try to solve things. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. This handles so well. Oh, I love that you're just Why does this handle this well? Corners. Front Same. wheel drive, limited slip diff, but it just, it does good stuff. Well, this car actually has five less horsepower than the prior gen, down to 200 horsepower, but still the same amount of torque. But the torque comes on earlier, and it's far more progressive throughout the range. It's not just the flat toe. It actually rolls on as you're rolling on, which is excellent. It changes the dynamics of the car. It changes mm -hmm. the character. Well, it's a tiny little 1.5 liter engine. Yeah. That turbo shouldn't be good. Now, it does have a little bit of lag, but it's got surprising amounts of power. And they also tune it for the horsepower to be yeah. climbing all the way almost to redline versus dying halfway through the red band, which is pretty common with these small little turbos. I like that you're chucking this in. No, you, can. you can. That's the thing yeah. about it. It's just, it's so precise. And it handles mid-corner corrections very well. It's yeah, not true. just. That it's, was close. It was close. Wow. It's it's not just a front wheel drive that has <laughs> understeer because of course you can make an understeer of no course. limited slip diff will fully solve that sure sure but mid corner you can make little corrections and refine what it's doing without it all just falling apart they've yeah. stiffened everything yep they've worked hard on this car and they've also worked hard to keep the price down because this is under twenty nine thousand dollars and we've got the fully loaded si including the performance tires that's yep. only two hundred dollars extra spend 200 bucks i noticed that as we've been driving this car you can drive it harder and you're still not really finding the limits whereas some cars you find it yes you think, there it is yep absolutely. no further that kind of scared me it scared the car <laughs> we're done but this one just encourages you to keep finding it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember us chucking in the last Civic Si this hard. I don't think as well. I agree with that. I do think that the ride has been compromised a little bit. I don't think the ride is as good as the prior Civic Si or no, the Golf it's R for that all matter. Around. But at Thicker, the same time, uh, roll bars, st yes. springs, all around. But if you're willing to accept that sportier ride, there's nothing yeah. but composure here. It's yeah. really well composed. It's just stiff for your typical commute car, but it's not trying to be your typical commute car. Right. It also has rev match from the Type R which on is the awesome. SI for the first time. It's good. Which is good. It, it is a good rev match system. I complained in the last gen because I thought the pedals were too far apart, and so that was why the Type R had rev match and the SI needed it. Mm. I actually think the pedals are better spaced here. It's one mm. of the many places I think Honda has listened, so I can heel toe myself, but then it still has an excellent rev match. So all of a sudden you feel like a hero. I'm not a hero. You're I'm just bumbling my way. Thing we are we are great. hammering along, and it does really well. It doesn't feel like a twenty-eight thousand dollar economy sedan. It doesn't, doesn't. No, not at all. It doesn't feel like some sort of torture chamber. Oh, I got it for well, cheap. Well, yeah, yeah. But now it's far past its SI heritage. It's gotten so good. Mm. And then you factor in the price. This is a compelling car. Now the wheelbase is one point four inches longer than the prior SI than the mm -hmm. prior Civic. You'd think that would make it less nimble. Better freeway ride, comfortable, you know, cruising mm -hmm. kind of attitude. Bigger it car. It rotates yeah. still, mm -hmm. even yeah. with a longer wheelbase. Yeah. And the car is pretty large to begin with. Yeah. And bigger car with more space, and yet you lost none of the goodness right. of the dynamics, which is a success for sure, and is hard to do, yeah. absolutely. Now, pedestrian crash standards have dramatically affected the front end design. Yeah. Yeah. You're seeing much of the hood out there because it's far more upright, mm. it's a more vertical front end, and it's very flat, it's very blunt on the front, and that piece right above the grille and the lights, Honda actually calls that an upper bumper. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you heard a car having two bumpers? And it's an upper bumper to, to hit you in the thighs for pedestrians. Somebody's gonna show me the stat. When you're changing the entire front end of a car, for pedestrian crash st standards suggests that people are getting hit in droves. <laughs> yes. That it's yes. like a constant plague of a problem. If it's reshaping the entire front yeah. of a car to the point it has a gonzo nose. Honda didn't just overcorrect. They're sawing at the wheel now. Okay. Future, sporty. No, 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 no. Nobody likes it. So let's go back to <laughs> a car nobody recognizes. It's still the Lone Ranger on the front end and, you know, 
put the mask on, but still, I think it's too conservative at this point. Mm. The Civic was edgy and cool, and it was the coolest car they built. It was amazing looking. Yeah. You see a base Civic from the 10th generation, you think, is that it? Nope, that's just still a base, mm -hmm. and it looks good. Whereas this one kind of looks like almost every other car on the road now, it I hate to say it. It does look pretty normal now. You're right, it is an overcorrection. That is an interesting way to assess normal it. Normal is fine, but now the taillights are too big. They're out of proportion with the car. Oh, interesting. Look at the D-pillar. Okay. That little tiny flourish where the window could just end oh, the extra right triangle? at the curb. The extra triangle oh. is just fussy and too much. It didn't do anything. When parts of a design don't add or make mm. it better or more beautiful, you know you've gone too far. <laughs> you know, designers have always been beholden to governmental standards yeah. worldwide. Yeah, yeah. It depends on where they want to put the car. But it's changed the character of the car for me. Mm. And the overhang in the front is too long. If you don't look at the front and rear clips and look at this car from a side view, what is it? I think it's two-thirds of a charger. Two-thirds of a charger. I think it looks like a scaled-down charger. <laughs> you know when you see the, the, the non-Hot Wheels but like the other brands where the car looks almost right? Yeah. This is like the off-brand Hot Wheels look of a charger. It's like, oh, it's a charger, I think. Charger, Civic, they're about the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? yeah they're exactly the same. We'll get inside, and the big news here is the vents. It's a strip of honeycomb, but I like it. It's clean, it's classy, and yes. you don't see the vent strakes. Yep. Those are invisible now, and you get a cool joystick that's easy to use, mm -hmm. probably inexpensive to manufacture, yeah. and it's just different. It is. It's, it's a really interesting. It's a clever solution, mm -hmm. and everything else is very clear, clean. It's got knobs. You can use them. This is front and center, the screen right here. I think the entire interior design is going to last a long time. I think you're right. looks and ergonomics. It's incredibly simple in all the best ways. It is focused mm -hmm. on, I need to drive, and things need to fall to hand, and they need to be exactly where I left them last time and make sense. There's actual buttons on the steering wheel. Yeah. All of those make sense. These HVAC controls are like jewelry. Fantastic yeah. Yeah. clicks, and they're e it, this whole HVAC system, it's not buried in this screen. Yeah. The whole HVAC system is wonderful. We and many others got on Honda for the last gen of not having a volume knob yep. on their system here and having a weird touchpad for volume on the steering wheel. Both of those are fixed. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Honda is listening. I also do think they fixed the pedal spacing. That's interesting. They worked on the gear shift. Now, why does Honda work on the gear shift? They've got one of the best ones in the industry. They still worked on it. It's got shorter throws. It's yep. been tightened up even further. It's wonderful to work with. I do think it's better for people that are comfortable driving stick. Mm -hmm. If you're learning, mm -hmm. I don't think this is the car for you. Sure. If you're comfortable, sure. I think you're really going to appreciate it. You're going to enjoy it. I yeah. think it's got kind of a high barrier for entry. Like, you better kind of know what you're doing. As far as engagement? Yes. Okay. The GTI is a great example for a car that is much easier mm. to learn and kind of bumble mm. through driving stick shift. This asks you to be decent at it, which is rewarding if you are. Ergonomically, really, really well thought. Very good. SI specific seats in this, they're actually mm -hmm. pretty cool. I don't find them that comfortable when you're just commute driving. But okay, when you're on enough. a back road, they've got better bolsters yeah. for thighs yeah. and for torso. And they actually feel really good when you chuck this car around. It's the just mm, droning along. Yeah. I want them to feel a little more comfortable with it. You can des decide that obviously these are okay for what you want to do in them. Modes again, mm -hmm. but back to Honda saying, let's give you what you asked for. Yeah. We've got normal and sport and individual. You can dial it in yourself. Thank you, Honda. That's awesome, yeah, too. for sure. Well, the back seats are excellent, and the mm -hmm. trunk space is huge. That's not an SI thing. That's a Civic thing. Mm -hmm. But what Honda has done to the dynamics of the car to make a car now this large, this is as big or bigger than Accords used to be. It is absolutely old Accord size. Absolutely. You think Civic, is. and yep. you think small and nimble uh -huh. and lightweight. We it's put two huge. huge suitcases side by side in the trunk, and it still had space. The bummer is the SI is no longer offered in a hatch. But I honestly think when you see the amount of trunk space, you won't care. It's under 3,000 pounds and under 30 grand. It's under 29. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you know what I'm not doing? I'm not on a screen here going, what's the convergence of the yeah. vent with the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just simple and clean yeah. and well laid out, thereby proving that a futuristic car, a new car, can absolutely be clean and still just very intuitive. Mm -hmm. I like that. The thing I don't like is this electric parking brake. It always True. wants to sit itself. Uh -huh. All right, let's go back to sport. So when you set it to sport, Two things happen, unless you're in individual mode. It's the steering weight. 
the base steering weight is still pretty heavy. When it goes all the way to sport, I feel like the weight is too much. I agree. I felt that way on the prior Civic. Yeah. yeah. I like the weight and what it does to feedback because it, it doesn't you know snap the wheel in your hands. But on the other hand, I don't want it too heavy like it is. So the good thing is you do have customizable you know, yeah, weight you with the steering. Before. You couldn't mix and match before and now right. you can't. Right. The other thing is the throttle response and the engine gets noisier, but they've worked on it. Yeah. They have worked on it, so yeah. it's still piped in, but it's better. I'm not minding it quite as much. The exhaust do this weird little loop-de-loop -loop on the way out the back. That's, yeah. a, that's an SI-specific thing that was it, part it of their is. retuning. Right. But now, on a road like this, this is very tight. Like yeah. I said, it should be less nimble than it is mm -hmm. with a longer wheelbase. But it is very quick through corners. You keep it in gear, engine wants to rev, and this thing just hangs on. And what I've noticed the most about it is, going all the way back, 25 years ago is when Honda put an electric power steering rack in an S2000. Yeah. Here it is, very refined, to the point where I think it has a natural feel to it. Mm. Like a natural, old school, almost hydraulic feel to it. I don't think there's enough tire Excellent. information for hydraulic, but at the same time, there wasn't tire information in the S2000, and well, this no. does feel good. This I really think does it's feel good. I really give it to you. Excellent. Yeah. To the point where you're going to wonder is this really? They put this on the Civic Si? Wow. There's a lot of precision here, big time. Yeah, I do like it a lot. Yeah, there we go. Get some noise out of the tires. See if we can get a tune out of this trombone. You were surprised that I was chucking this car around. It's not like you're holding back. <laughs> but it's easy to do that. It's so that's the thing about it. It's just it's it's endearing and it just adds asks you to keep going for yep. sure. It's very confidence inspiring. Rev match. See, that's just fun. If a car is fun, it's not embarrassing that it has rev match. It's not a mm. shot against you. You're <laughs> less of an enthusiast. No, it's just it makes the car easy and accessible to drive. I'll shift just because. <laughs> Why not, right? All right, decreasing radius. Okay, power. Have you noticed on the tack, as you're increasing in revs, uh -huh. the higher number, like four, five, six, it dims out and then it comes to life as you near, yep. get near to that number. The one you're about it's to be on is the brightest cool. one on the gauge. It's because two-thirds of the gauge cluster is now a screen. Yeah. And your speedo is still an actual gauge, so they'll be able to mix and match there. I, I don't know if anybody else is doing that right now. That's fascinating. Yeah, the 3,000 pounds just under, and you can really feel when you turn in where you throw the weight. Yeah. It feels very controllable. You're coming through the corner, and then there's the weight. Sure, yep, yep. It doesn't feel unpredictable. Well, it's not sloppy at all. No. It's very taut, well, well tuned, and I, I do love how confidence inspiring it is to put it through a corner. Yep. And the rotation, yep. it's front wheel drive rotation, but it's superb front wheel drive rotation. Great. It's very controllable. Rev match. See, that's just fun. How cool is that? A little thrashy, a little noisy, but you know. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder. It's not gonna be sonorous. <laughs> no. It's not possible. We're thrashing it within an inch of its life. It's good. I'm impressed by how much power this feels like it has. Yeah. It's not a drag car. You're not gonna amaze anybody at a light, but man, when you're mid range here, it's just satisfying, and you can keep finding a little bit more because the horsepower keeps climbing. Yeah. So it feels like it surges more. This is surprising. It's better than I thought. I agree. I thought I'd like it, but just like it enough. Mm. I didn't think I'd really come away making it a recommendation. It's cool.